Hello and welcome back to Tinker Talks Guns. Yes, I've been working in the shop all day, so I'm kind of a mess. It happens. So, this time we're here to talk about this. This is a 22 caliber Derringer, and it is, if I recall correctly, the third handmade gun I ever made many years ago. Um, it's kind of big for a single shot 22, but you know, I was new to these things. And uh, it's uh, pretty simple in operation. It has a half cock safety notch, and you move this back. There's a spring plunger inside that locks the gun closed. You can see the end of it there. You insert a cartridge, in this case, a 22 long rifle cartridge, close it. And then you're ready to go once you cock the hammer. There's really not much to it. <laughs> and uh, it's, it's kind of big for what it is, but it's still not big. So let's go to the tabletop and have a closer look. So I said that the gun is big for what it is. It's four and a half inches long and three and a quarter inches high to the top of the kind of protrusive hammer spur. I have semi-automatic pistols that are smaller than this, <laughs> but it's still not big overall. It's also very thin. It's only a half an inch thick, except for the knob for the locking plunger and the grips, which are fatter because my wife said, don't make them as thin as the rest of the gun. It would look stupid. The grips are zebra wood, nicely finished and lacquered. And the finish of the gun is very plain. Um, the mechanism of the gun, I'm putting up a picture, as you can see, the mechanism of the gun is very, very simple. There are two springs and two moving parts. And um, that um, clothespin spring type arrangement with the loop and uh, the, the wire looped mainspring, um, is something I've only done once and I never did it again because it's not that great. So uh, as you can see, like I say, it's very, very simple. Now, the trigger is a fully shrouded trigger. It completely disappears when the gun is not in any form ready for use. When you cock the hammer to the half cock, it pokes out just a little bit and it cocks out more when you bring it to full cock. To discharge the gun, I'm going to put in an expended cartridge here so we can dry fire it properly. This is a six millimeter Flaubert cartridge. Is you just pull on the trigger. Now you want to pull the bottom of the trigger because it's hinged quite low. And uh, if you try to, the higher you pull, the harder it is. Now I, I wasn't able to measure the trigger, the trigger pull because the round bit on the end of the handy-dandy Lyman trigger gauge um, just rolls off the bottom of the trigger. But you pull towards the bottom of the trigger, and there's a tiny bit of very smooth creep, and then it releases, and things go bang, and you're good to go. So, to empty the chamber, you simply open it up, pry it out with a fingernail, and there you go. Uh, the finish is very plain. But, you know, it's not it's not a showpiece, except in the terms of showing people, hey, look, I made a gun. Um, what I did to make the barrel assembly, the breech assembly, whatever you want to call it, is I bored a 3 8 inch diameter hole through a piece of metal and then cut the top of it away and inserted a 22 caliber 3 8 inch barrel liner, which actually works just fine as a barrel for standard velocity 22 long rifle. And uh, the hammer screw, I had learned, the hammer screw is not go through the frame at all. I mean, it goes through a hole in the frame. It doesn't hold the frame down because I wanted to be able to work on it more easily. <laughs> and it's just a whole lot easier to be able to put everything in place and have it all nailed down before you put the side cover on. And you can see the screws, the slots are off center because I made the screws. And... Uh, that was not my strongest thing at that point in time. So it's very basic, very simple. And of course, it's pretty much useless beyond an arm's length. Um, 
with no sights whatsoever, and in fact, the firing pin sticking up over the sight plane, um, the, the maximum effective range is maybe three yards. Uh, beyond that, it gets almost impossible to locate a hit with any kind of precision at all. But that's not really what it's for. But <laughs> and by the way, this is a rifled barrel liner. This is a fully legal firearm made in compliance with, at the time it was made, all state, federal, and local laws. Um, that's just kind of neat, a little conversation piece. I don't really do much with it, except occasionally, you know, test fire a cartridge or something. Um, so it's not actually terribly useful, but it's kind of neat. Of course, I didn't make this intending for it to be useful. I made it because it was cool to make it and see what I could do and see how I could solve various problems. And uh, it did that. Originally, I didn't have any serrations on the uh, hammer because they're not really necessary. But eventually, I put them in just because I felt I should. Anyway, kind of a nifty little gun. And if it's not particularly useful, well, I don't really care. So, shout out to my supporters on Patreon. Your contributions help more than you know. Also, I'd like to thank channel benefactors who have helped with contributions of ammunition, allowing me to present their firearms, use of their facilities. Um, your assistance has been invaluable in making this channel work. Now, in the link below, or there's a link in the description below to AmmoSquared.com. This is an ammunition subscription service that I and several of the YouTubers use. If you follow the link and decide it's for you, then I get a little bit of bonus ammo when you sign up. And that helps the channel. So, like I said, there's not much to it. So I guess that's it for this time. Um, I hope this finds you well. Stay safe, take care, and we'll talk to you again real soon.